Welcome to Tile Capes. I'm Cody Nestor. He's Todd Hill. What's up, guys? Today we're back to talk about the Acolyte Episode 7. Thank Christ, Todd. Only two more to go. Woo! This one and one more, and our national nightmare is over. <laughs> what did you think the story was in Episode 7? So, folks, did you like Episode 3? No. Do you want to go back and revisit it, but just from a different point of view? No. Welcome to Episode 7. <laughs> yeah, we're back, baby. We're back. Four episodes after the Lesbian Witch Coven flashback in Episode 3, we're back to see it all again, Todd. Yeah. But this time, what really happened mm. from not uh, from, a, from a reliable narrator, I what guess. What went down that night. What went down. <laughs> Uh, so the, the, the things that actually went down, uh, we'll, we'll get into them, but I assume the reveal and everything that was shown here completely changed your, your thoughts about this show. It's now a good show. It's completely redeemed in your opinion, right, Todd? Uh, it's totally not redeemed. <laughs> it's, it's still just mid, uh, I'm waiting for it to be over. <laughs> uh, so... Tell us. I'm wondering at this point how they're going to – there's a one, there's one episode left. Mm -hmm. How are they going to tie all this up? Where are, I'm still wondering, an episode from the end, where are we going? So that says a lot right there. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, I guess it's just going to come down to, like, Soul and May going to find – Osha and Quamir in some kind of fight and stuff. I think that's where we're probably headed more than uh, that. And I guess will it'll be a will they, won't they, who's going to, is May going to stay, is she going to turn to the light or stay in the dark? Is Osha going to go stay in the light or go to the dark? I guess it's going to be your thread to pull for episode eight. Does, and who gives a shit? At this point, yeah. It's not been set up properly enough. Like you're just now... You've just now teased the idea of these two characters pivoting around, which is probably just a big cock tease anyway, just to try to yeah. draw it out for the last episode. It'll probably be your standard affair. It'll probably be, you know, Osha, Soul will probably die, and Osha will probably, will, she'll come back into her force powers and fight Quamir, and maybe May will die or something, right. you know, or something like that. And it'll probably be your, your standard affair. I don't think this show has the capability of doing anything interesting <laughs> and pulling anything out of its ass here at the, 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 the eleventh hour, right? You know what I mean. So, I, I, but again, yeah. What we, here we are in the last episode. We're just now going back to again revisiting territory we already tread on once before. Once before, but from a different point of view, slightly different points yes. of view, I guess. So, tell us what happened at the beginning of the episode, like uh, you know, kind of leading up to showdown at the Witch Coven, and what did you think of it? So we kind of see that the Jedi were on that planet to start with because they've kind of seen its its life is kind of flourishing there. It's kind of... Yeah. And they're There's looking... some kind of hyperspace accident. Yeah, uh, and they're looking... Trinity says. Yeah, and they're looking... <laughs> Trinity. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call her. Yeah. But they're looking for uh, signs or evidence for something I think they call a virgins, which yeah. is like some Virgin? kind of... No, not oh. a, not a, no. Yeah. It's a virgence, which <laughs> yeah. is like some kind of big, like, force event. Yeah. Force. That's created life out of this right. hyperspace event where this planet was marked as lifeless or whatever. And the thing that we kind of see right here early on is uh, Torben's whole deal, uh, even though he's a Jedi and he's just a Padawan, but he's still a Jedi, he's just fucking over it. He's like a whiny little he's homesick a, bitch. Yeah, he's a little whiny bitch. He wants to go home. And that's how, you know, really this whole thing falls apart. Because they tell him. They <laughs> slip up and tell yeah. him, basically, we've been sitting here to look for a virgin. If we, we find, find the virgin, we're we at it. <laughs> so, you know, there's there's parts where they're, somebody's collecting some some kelp in a in a, in a a bucket thing. Yeah. And then there's parts where they've got Kelnock out there with a, a metal detector. Yeah. <laughs> He's just out there like some old man on a beach looking for jewelry. And, uh, yeah, so they're, they're, they're looking for these signs of life. And then and, Saul comes back, uh, comes up on the twins, you know, as we, we kind of see it from his perspective, where they were kind of having their talk as episode three originally kind of started. Yeah, where May was like torturing the little butterfly thing. Yeah. And more of the corals, like, what the fuck are you doing out here? Get back inside. And it's like he mo he's almost like immediately kind of creepily, like, attracted to Osha, like, you know, Osha. Yeah. This is the one. I may even make her my Padawan. It's yeah. Like, and I've always felt, even from the beginning, there's something between more between Soul and Osha than this, I don't know, Master and Padawan. I may right. be way off base. You think that's what they're going with this? I don't know. I mean, there could <laughs> be. I mean, you don't know. Again, Soul is, for what development his character's had, he's definitely been developed as not your typical Jedi. He's not your... He is seemed to be very emotional. Mm -hmm. He seems to make 
rash decisions yeah. and follow his emotions more than your typical stoic Jedi. He's not the, you know, he's he's more Qui-Gon than he is Obi-Wan. Yeah. Kind so of the thing. Jedi kind of show back up at the Coven, kind of like they did originally, but this time we see that, uh, I think it was the twins' mother, the, I guess the main the main witch. Mother Anasea. Yeah, yeah. she kind of she kind of takes over Torben's mind. You know, she kind of, you know, messes with him a little bit, you know. It's like, oh, you want to go home? Just yeah. say the word. Like, yeah. I won't deny you. And there's a little, right. it's a little sexual in a way. It's mm-hmm. Like, you know, just say it. You know, I wouldn't, I, I you know, I can make it happen i wouldn't deny you it's a little like a little sexual undertone like i kind of picked up as well like kind of like a, yeah. a seduction in a way or whatever but it's like you know just i, I would let you go home right these other people won't let you go home but but i'll let you mother anna say it would let you go home just say the word it's back to coruscant for you and the twins kind of going to be uh tested by that jedi kind of plays out the same but you know Torben gets those uh, blood samples from him, and after he's done analyzing, M count. Yeah, we don't say we can't say many chlorians. You can't say many chlorians like the, anymore. Those, those are like banned words in the in the Star yeah. Wars universe. You can't say many chlorians. He's like this M count is so high. Mm-hmm. It's like you know he thinks that these twins are the convergence. I think they actually say it's like they're not even really twins. It's like it's just like they split the convergence in half. Even very force sensitive twins would yeah. have different whatever. But you would look at them. Their markers are, are the same. And and like, like, like they've been created. And he's like, oh, holy fuck, guys. This is what we've been <laughs> looking for. Of agents. I'm going to speed bike over yeah, here. I'm going to get on the speeder <laughs> bike. I'm not going to say two words. I'm going to go over here with no thought, no plan. Go right speeder <laughs> bike up to this coven just to progress this story. Yeah. Absolute dog shit writing. <laughs> It makes he just literally just like he jumps gets a on a wild speeder bike hair. and takes off. He gets a wild hair up his ass and is just like on the speeder bike, no plan, no thought, no nothing. You're like, well, Cody, he's he's been manipulated. <laughs> he mind. wanted to go home before that shit. Yeah, exactly. Happened. And it's just a completely again, he doesn't have a character, but if you can argue he had a character, it's completely outside of a character of a of a Padawan to be like that gung ho to completely like yeah. just sabotage everything by like speeder biking off and this him doing that really just it it's serves soul's purpose perfectly because he wanted to go back he, yeah he wanted him he he, he wanted he, ocean yeah, definitely he's wanted to get the the twins out of there but mm. he, he doesn't really care about me yeah seems, again he's telling indara he's like you know i feel like i've seen this little girl in the woods and she's going to be my padawan yeah if you would. know what i mean <laughs> I think like you do i think you do like there's no question like she's going to be my padawan and you're like that's creepy that's sus that's weird that's pretty sus what's the will of the forest cody there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing pedo about it man it's just the will of the forest. fuck you <laughs> it's creepy it's creepy it's creepy it's pedo uh i don't buy any of it it's just very weird and it just feels like well well shit we're at episode seven we got to get this shit moving We've promised them the backstory of this because obviously the backstory in episode three can't be exactly what happened because it makes no fucking sense. And it still don't make much, much more, sense here. Much more fucking sense from there. Um, we see that Torben and Soul, they um, apparently Jedi's are good rock climbers too because they have to like rock climb. Soul does it twice. Yes, rock Soul climb. scales that thing twice. Yeah, into the, into the fortress. He climbs it twice, but him and Torben climb it. They confront Mother Anasea and Mother Coral uh, at, at the, the lesbian witch coven. We see that May, she still starts the fire as we previously have seen. Yep. This time with some regurts, though. Yeah, she, we see she she's trying to stomp it out, uh, you know, after she throws the little lantern down and lights Osha's little book. Of, she regrets know. it. She, she tries re- to stomps it. Right. She <laughs> comes running out. She comes running out into the complex screaming for help, and she's like, help, help, and then immediately Soul's like, Osha! <laughs> And you're like, no, no. I, this dude is like obs- obsessed with OSHA. <laughs> it's uh, it's May though, dumbass. And then we see, uh, I think Zack Snyder come in for a couple scenes, and he comes in with like some slow mo. It's like Mother Coral goes to like strike its soul with her little staff. Yeah. And then at the same time, Mother Anasea she uses like her shadow possession jutsu, like from Naruto. Yeah. And uh, she starts to like go like. 
I don't know, like ghost or like phantasm yeah. almost. And you see that kind of aura around her as she's kind of disappearing, but it's kind of the same aura as kind of appearing at the same time around May. Yeah. Like she was about to possess May, maybe. Possibly. I don't really understand the context of what I was supposed to be seeing there because we see it later that's used to actually possess someone else. So was Anasea going to possess May in that moment? And for what reason? If you're going to possess somebody to fight the Jedi, why is it one of your young children? Yeah, why not possess <laughs> the little Jedi boy or try to possess Soul? Yeah. Like, I don't understand what she was doing in that moment. Right. Like, maybe someone in the comments can tell us, but yeah, help be us. warned, I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, she turns, she goes off phantasm and shadow possession and, uh, soul ends up stabbing her in the gut Yeah, and murdering her. So Yikes. I guess cause he thought May in his mind, OSHA, um, was in danger. Was in danger. Um, and like, again, I guess I s- assume he attacked her out of fear that she was going to hurt the girl, Yeah, which seems like kind of a leap. Again, all the logic leaps here seem to be. There's nothing dramatically shown in this witch covenant, nothing they've observed to, to really make you believe that those girls are in danger other than this is a sect of Force users that are not the Jedi. Right. So are we saying that the Jedi, they see any other Force users that are not Jedi as, as a threat? As a threat, right. I guess, is like what we're supposed to take away is the hubris uh, of the Jedi here is that anyone not like us is to be looked at as a potential threat. So, Cause there's nothing in the show that you actually see that if a character in real life saw the events take place, that you could say that these girls were in danger necessarily. Right. You know, it's I like, you, yeah. it's like Christians looking at, at two girls being raised as atheists is, is how I would look at it in my yeah. mind. It's like a bunch of Christians like, Oh, they're raising this girl. These two girls as atheists. They're in trouble. Like right. that's the equivalent of what I see is okay. like what yeah. soul would be seeing at the outside of it. Cause there's not, not any physical threat or danger or hurt inflicted on these girls that they've witnessed. No. So it's all about philosophy. We can raise them better than you, you can. can. Exactly. Yeah. Their mother, who had the power to create a virgins in the force, she has to be pretty powerful, you would think. Oh, but yeah. Get, but dies immediately. 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 <laughs> immediately. Uh, we see that after Anasaya dies, Mother Coral possesses uh, someone, Todd. Who does she possess? Kalnaka. Kalnaka, the, uh, the Wookiee the Jedi. Wookie. Here we go. We finally do get... The Kanaka fight. We do Kalnaka get... Kalnaka fight. <laughs> Banaka fight. <laughs> Um, what did you think of the Kel Naka fight, Todd? I mean, I hate to keep going back to this, but probably the highlight of the episode. <laughs> the only good thing yeah. about these episodes are some of the action. I mean, sometimes. whoever was action or fight choreography on this show, I'll, I'll tip my hat to you. You, you, guess where you've got me. <laughs> There's a lot of big jumps. I think Kanaka does a big jump yeah. at one point. I think Soul does a big jump at one point. A lot of leaping. Yeah, a lot of leaping. Uh, Kelnaka versus Torben is most of it. Mm-hmm. Torben's kind of on the defensive. Uh, we see Torben gets his infamous scar. We see how he gets his face scarred. We don't yeah. see how he ages. Uh, like 16 years and becomes an old man uh, in just a few years. We don't see how that takes place. Right. But we do see he he uh, he gets his car, or his car. His, he gets a car, Todd. <laughs> Here's a new car. His, his, Merce- his Mercedes gets keyed by the Wookiee, <laughs> and that fucks up he, everything. He gets his scar. <laughs> um so here's here's one of the here's some more like some more piss in our faces that they're telling us that it's rain. Okay. Is um so Coral and like fifteen I feel like I'm on the walking dead. Coral. <laughs> Mother Coral and like fifteen witches possess Kelnaka, right? Because you see those witches in the background; they're all black. Their eyes are all right? black eyed and they're swaying. Yeah, like you know the power they're of one yeah. and the power of many, all that kind of stuff, right? right? And and Dara comes in and she does like she shows up and does like a matrix move on Kelnaka's head, takes him down on the ground, and like uses her force ability to like push those fifteen witches and Mother Coral out of his out mind. of his mind, and so that. That, to me, you're telling me that Indara in, in is powerful enough to do that and, like, eject 15 witches from this Wookiee's mind but got beat by completely inept and hapless May in episode one? Exactly. I don't... It don't ring true. I don't... It don't, no, it don't add no up. No fucking way, Todd. No. Like, you can't tell me she's this powerful Jedi 
that can do this and comes in and then gets killed by a little knife and because she was tricked into like looking at some alien bartender like you can't you can't have it both it ways it can't be both ways mm-hmm. she can't be that powerful and that stupid at the same time <laughs> right it doesn't make sense if she was just a hapless as the rest of them I can buy it but she's she's powerful enough to eject all these witches that seem pretty powerful as a as a coven I don't buy it no I don't buy it does it not just, ring true it, again it seems like more character assassinated uh, an assassination uh, we're also expected to believe that that we uh, we kind of thought that the fire would have had to have been exacerbated by other circumstances like when we saw it in episode three no no it's just that, that one fire spreads apparently I guess they're trying to say that it it it, it spreads through the electrical stuff in that wall because you see a lot more of it sparking and stuff at that control yeah. panel and I guess we're supposed to believe that it spreads through the cable right. and the construction that that fortress and into the I don't know whatever machinery the I don't know whatever whatever internal mechanisms keep that place running because it doesn't seem like it has power or anything right. but like it seems like it we're supposed to believe that it, it spreads through all of that and goes through the wiring I guess and it's not just a fire spreading across stone is what I guess we're supposed yeah. to believe. There's some electricity there that kind of sparked up and that fanned the flames. That, yeah, and, okay. the, and it carried it to the reactor or to the generator or whatever the fuck is in the middle of that building, and that's where you get your big explosion. That's what kind of collapses the bridge and stuff where we see May and Osha on before. Um, tell us about the bridge and uh, Saul's choice that he has to make time. So uh, Saul comes up and we see kind of the bridge scene, but from a different angle, it starts to collapse. You got May on one side, you got Osha on the other side, and he starts out holding it on both sides, but, you know, he's obviously not powerful enough to hold up both sides, which, you know, contradictory or thing. Or is he? he? Or is he? <laughs> We've seen uh, lesser jet out of him, in my opinion, you know, stop starships in, in, in the sky. So right. we'll, we'll see. But, right. you know, he, he makes his choice. Obviously, you know, May, he lets May go to save Osha. Uh, like, yeah. Uh, uh, you're out of here. I kinda, I kinda, <laughs> I'm kind of feeling Osha more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you buy it? No. <laughs> did, did you need it? Did you need him to, like... Yeah, at that point, have I, to struggle between that decision. Yeah, I don't think you even needed him to be part of that. I think that should have just happened the way we kind of originally saw it. She falls to what we think is her death, and he's just there, kind of to get ocean. Ocean in time. At, yeah, in time. Yeah, you didn't need to see what what's it setting up. What's it doing? Yeah, what does that <laughs> what does that add or subtract to his character? Do we we everybody's a sh- everybody's shit <laughs> as far as everybody's a shit person in this show. The anyway. one thing I thought of is possibly if you know uh, he's told he's telling the story to May, right. but if Osha finds out about it and you know he she finds out that Saul allowed M- May to fall to her death or what they thought was her death, right. does that push her farther down that dark side path? That's the only thing I can maybe see. Okay. I, I mean, I can see that. <laughs> I could see that if that's revealed um, to Osha at some point, it could, could. Am I giving more credit than credit is maybe, due? Yeah. Probably. But I mean, that could be used to quicken her descent, I yeah. guess, into the dark side in our last episode, if that's the way they go with it. But yeah, I get it. I just, again, I don't feel like, I feel like they think it had a lot of weight to it, but it doesn't because it's like, I don't feel like it adds too much. No. Like, I don't feel like it, I don't feel like it detracts horribly, but I don't feel like it adds much to his character to... I mean, I hate to say this, but we already knew he was OSHA crazy anyway. Yeah. So if he's going to drop one, yeah, I mean, you, you know he's going to drop May exactly. any fucking way. You know he's going to drop May. I mean, come on. Given the choice, yeah. like, he's going he's gonna to drop May, like... I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't, I feel like they thought it had some kind of narrative weight to it, but I just don't think it matters really. No. Like in the context of it, like I don't really, like you said, it might matter to Osha if she hears that, you know, but like. Saw that her sister. But if I'm Osha at this point, okay, Osha has, um, she was locked in a room by May as a child. May did set up events that did kill a lot of those witches that's still true that's still that still true. holds true like the jedis really uh, you know this the jedis are responsible for i guess killing her mother yes so 
I guess she, that could, could come out that mm-hmm. Soul killed her mother or right. whatever. So that could be part of it. But, like, for just looking at Osha and May, May did lock her in the room, did try to kill her, was responsible for setting a fire that did kill all the other witches except for her mother. Didn't want her to be a Jedi. Tried to sabotage everything about her becoming a Jedi. Yeah. Uh, partnered herself with the master that killed a bunch of her friends. Brought that about. So, like, if I'm Osha, like, do I... Am I super mad that, like, <laughs> so let that bitch fall? Yeah. When she was a kid? Do I really give a shit? Because, I mean, like, she was a bad egg. That's the- <laughs> if I'm Osha, I'm like, she is a bad she egg. She's a bad kid. I'd have dropped her, too. She's my sister, but she's bad. What I thought was so stupid about the scene, too, is, like, you see it, like, Soul's, like, holding them. And those two are just on the bridge, like, Osha, May, Osha, May. And they're not doing anything. How about run back to the opposite, opposite sides, sides where, where he's holding Where it's safe. Or, like, one of you jump across. <laughs> right. Or do anything instead of just wait to die. Yeah. That's because, again, this show doesn't. Doesn't care about the. It doesn't care about the being smart Look or at like this hand. It, it, not, not this, this hand. hand. And we're gonna <laughs> drop this hand because uh, May's a bad egg, and I got the hots for OSHA. Uh, yeah, I just again, I just I think the show thinks it had a lot more weight, but if you look at it rationally from OSHA's point of view, like what do I care if he dropped her? I mean, for me, this show will probably, like you said, it'll probably be like, how could you kill my sister? How could you, how could you let her fall? Like it should have mm-hmm. been me or something like, but if rationally, if I'm in the situation, I'm like, that bitch tried to kill me. Yeah. She locked me in a room and set on fire. <laughs> Fuck her. Why did you even try to stop her from falling anyway? You yeah. should have focused all your attention on me. That's why I'm mad. You should a hundred percent try to keep me from falling right. and not even give her an attempt to keep her from dying. If yeah. I'm OSHA, but again, the show... We'll see. The show, we'll, we'll see how it goes in the last episode. Um, back on the ship, so, uh, so with OSHA, uh, back on the ship, so young OSHA, we kind of see it kind of the ending scene, but a little bit more context as we saw in episode three. OSHA's back on the ship. She's kind of recovering. Uh, and Indara makes a choice as well. And Indara makes a choice to to lie to the council or to at least give them a half truth to, to withhold some very key details. She, she yes. says, we're going to tell them that may started a fire and burned down the coven and we lost everyone except for OSHA. And we're not going to tell them about your involvement and anything else. Cause they may take away you being a Jedi. They'll definitely take away you being, uh, OSHA's master. Torben would probably be court martialed or something, whatever the equivalent of that is <laughs> right. in the Jedi Order. Because that's what I was thinking. I'm like, how are they gonna like? How is this dude gonna continue to be a Jedi after this? And they're like, oh, well, we're not gonna tell anybody. Yeah, we're just gonna let this clearly Secrets. dangerously emotional Padawan continue to be a Jedi because we want to cover our own asses, yeah. I guess, or whatever. So again, it's more of that trying to, like, really make you hate the Jedi. And, like, they're doing a great job of it. Yeah, I can't stand them at this point. (laughs) I can't stand them at this point, exactly. Uh, And then not only do they lie to the council and then Dara lies to the council, Saul, he uses that and tells that same same narrative. He spins that to Osha. When she wakes up. May started a fire. She burned down the place. Whatever. We got you out, but... We got you out. And Run then, away to Coruscant. Uh, yeah. You're going to be a Jedi. Yeah, exactly. And the, what happened to your mother and how she died, it, it's not May's fault. It's mine. That will probably come to light in Episode 8. And mm-hmm. maybe the, his choice to save her versus Osha or versus May will probably come to light in the next episode. But it's too little too late. None of this matters. It doesn't... I have no interest yeah. in the episode. It doesn't like... There's nothing in this episode. I'm like, hmm, that's kind of interesting. Like, let's see where they go with that. It's still, yeah. you, the foundation has not been laid for a good finale. So there was never a possibility of a good finale. So it's just like, let's see how underwhelming this next episode will be. Yeah, definitely at this point, I see that master dying somehow. Sith, not Sith. I don't know who, whose hand takes him yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, I, I... One of those twins, I think, dies. Yeah. And I definitely think Saul dies. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think I think it's going to be revealed Cormier's not really a Sith. He's just, you know, again, a fallen Jedi who... They got has whipped some, by Greenface. Yeah, that has some, <laughs> that has some Sith traits and maybe if he doesn't die by one of the main characters he dies from an actual Sith, a hidden Sith. He's like, actually, hey boy, you're revealing our shit. Exactly. <laughs> and he, he is then killed by an actual Sith and mm-hmm. they can say that either the Jedi cover it up um with Kiati and he, he 
continues to assassinate his character, or they say this, this person wasn't a Sith. He was just a, a, a wannabe. Jedi. Yeah, yes. he was a wannabe, a fallen Jedi wannabe. He wasn't a true Sith. So Ki-Adi Mundi's not made a liar of in the prequel trilogy, which everyone seems to care so much about him not being yes. a liar. Ki-Adi. Yeah. <laughs> Bless him. <laughs> Bless you, penis head Mundi. <laughs> Um, and then we get some kind of confrontation and I'm sure there'll be, will they, won't they, will OSHA follow the dark side or not? Will the reveal of soul killing her mother be the thing that pushes her to the, to the dark side or will she come back to the light? Will she fight against Quamir? Like I said, one of them dies for sure. And Saul probably dies for sure. Yeah. And the master is taken out at some point. By someone. By someone, either one of the main characters or a yet unseen Sith that we maybe set up as a, as a. Just whatever a tease for season two that I hope to Christ God, Almighty. I hope to God doesn't no. happen. I can uh, tell you one old boy that ain't watching it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just yeah, kidding. yeah. I, I agree with you. Uh, Todd, give us your review score and your final thoughts for the Acolyte episode seven. Uh, I think I've kind of hung here throughout for the most part, except for that one uptick in five. But I'm sticking at a four. This is just very mediocre to me. Uh, you know, the entire having to revisit episode three, some of it was actually from different angles, but almost shot for shot, word yeah. for word. I mean, there were definitely shot for shot stuff. And then there's a couple like, well, we'll do it a shot with, with yeah. a little different angle. Yeah. But kind of the whole, the thing for me is kind of the whole crux of it is, is Torben was a little crybaby bitch. Yeah. And I, and that's the whole thing. It starts at crumbling. Now that's, I don't buy that. And soul is too emotional and too Soul's attached too to emotional. A, a girl he does not know. No shit about at this yeah. point. It just who he keeps telling us he thinks is in trouble, but has no a, a physical evidence yeah. that she's in trouble. Not to keep hammering this nail, but it's just it's just lackluster writing. Uh, you combine that with what I think has been some lackluster acting, and yep. you just got a you got mid Star Wars. You got a lackluster show. Yeah, yep. you've got one of the the worst Star Wars properties um, since the sequels. Uh, since yeah. the sequel trilogy, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, in a lot of ways, this is worse than that. Um, in a lot of ways, in some some ways, it's all right, but you know, it's definitely this is not um, this is not Star Wars. It doesn't feel like Star Wars. Yeah. At, all. at this point, what? Where do you run the risk of just diluting the entire brand? How? Well, how? Yeah, I think we've already far far that, done that, but. Yeah. How much more are you going to pour out of that picture to where you don't even remember what the original flavor was? Yeah, I think we're, we're, we're kind of almost there. We're approaching that. Yeah. yeah the, the product has been diluted. The brand, I think if you say to most people that are real, you know, there, there's casual people and there's nothing long, wrong with casually enjoying Star Wars. And I think for, you know, for me these days, I pretty much just casually enjoy Star Wars. I'm I not on Wikipedia there, yeah. worrying about Kiati Mundi's birthday being changed or any of that shit. Yeah. But like, for people that really live and breathe and that, you know, really, you know, follow every piece of Star Wars media. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm sure everyone, if you mention Star Wars, like that, the name and the brand, it doesn't hold the same, the same way to that used to. Like most of the time it's you say some luster. Disney Star Wars, like you could say Disney Star Wars are People are like, oh, oh fuck, don't oh, get me God. started, dude. Yeah, like <laughs> you know, you have a few little shining moments, like you know, Andor and stuff. But you know, on the whole, it's been the sequels. You know, the first, the start of Mandalorian was good, then it fell off. Book of Boba Ahsoka Fett. Ahsoka was yeah, B B Book of Boba Fett was not good. Obi, Obi Wan, Wan was not yeah. good. Then you have shit like this, and I think this is. Even though I've not watched all of those, I've not watched Ahsoka. Um, I. It's it's still I think it, it's now the worst. It's not getting better. It's getting worse. It seems as mm -hmm. we go series by series, and it's it's sad. And it's sad to see what the the brand has become. Um, you know, uh, however many years it's been, fifty or so, whatever it's been since nineteen seventy seven. It's got to be over forty now, close yeah, to fifty. I would say till now that it's. Um, it is where it is, and yeah. here we are to where most of the time new Star Wars things, it's met with dread instead of excitement. Yeah, that's and, that's where we're at, honestly. And So for me, I agree with you. I'm going to give it a four. I'm going to give it a mediocre. I think this is just a mediocre episode coming off a very bad episode six. This is a mediocre seven. We'll see what they try to pull out of their ass in, in episode eight. Let's see how clever they think they try to get, or if they just... They just try to stick the landing. Paint the, the numbers. Yeah, paint by the numbers, exactly. So we'll, we'll see. Only one more to go, Todd. Yeah. Only one more to go. The light is here. 
Uh, that's it for this episode. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Feel free to send us an email or get in touch with us on social media. All the information is down at the bottom of your screen. Towel Capes will return. We may even take a next week off, Todd. There's not really much coming except for, ah! for Deadpool. Okay. There's not like a lot new right now. We may even take next week off and More come off back days. And I'm back. just kidding. <laughs> only, thing really, only thing really this week is to talk about that we could move forward would be the Acolytes. We might even save that for a week and really chew on it. Yeah, chew the it. fat on we there. Need to, we need to, you know, let it tw- turn yeah. up here. Let it, let it simmer. Yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. there's like again this this time of the year, a lot of people on vacation, a lot of lot of summertime activities. So why not us? We yeah. So why not <laughs> us, folks? Yes, why not us? So we might even take next week off. Not sure yet, but just stay tuned. We we definitely ask Tal Caves. Tal Caves will return. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye guys. Later, guys.